So we had a, um, a phase two presented at ASCA last year, and we subsequently uh, published, actually, I think it was in the first quarter of this year, Lancet Respiratory Medicine, the results of, of NIST-1. And um, in, in general terms, I won't give the numbers, that's, that's there in the citation, but um, what we found actually was that uh, a proportion of patients, double figures, um, responded, had partial responses to the PARP inhibition. Um, we found that there was a um, favorable disease control rate. This was over 50%. And we, we selected 50% um, control of disease at 12 weeks as a meaningful um, endpoint, primary endpoint for patients, because based on randomized trials in this setting, uh, particularly placebo controlled or um, randomized active symptom control studies, uh, we have a pretty good idea of what a placebo does in the relapse setting. And we would argue, actually, that um, if we can double that, if we can increase that by a factor of two, which is what we did in the MIST-1 study um, with the progression-free survival or the, the number of patients who progressed to 12 weeks, um, we might have a drug that could be taken forward into a randomized trial. So we, we met that criterion. It was a positive study. And um, we present all of that. I think the other main result is that um, aside from it meeting its primary endpoint, we didn't see a clear indication of BAP1 uh, or BRCA1 uh, predicting activity. Um, now, of course, all these patients were pre-selected and they were quite a small population, about 26 patients. So it may be um, a feature of the statistics that we just don't have enough power to um, detect a, a, a subgroup effect. Um, or indeed, this is emerging from some of our preclinical data that BAP1 isn't perhaps as um, potent a biomarker of um, response to PARP as we expected. What we've subsequently learned from our genetics is that uh, you know there are genes which are mutated uh, significantly in mesothelioma, BRCA2, in fact, we do see in a few patients and others related to that pathway that could easily account for these responses that we've been seeing. But um, the fact that we're seeing responses at all to a PARP inhibitor tells us that there must be a, a biology known as a homologous recombination deficiency present. And that's what we're searching for currently in our genetics.